So Austin has grown exponentially, especially in the last four or five years. Austin is a growing Muslim community. We have a packed agenda over here. I would say we have close to 200 plus families over here and it's growing. And this is the most popular area because all the kids come here and our community brothers who actually cook for 200 people. It's a palau, it's a chicken. So we also have a lot of cricket lovers over here. We actually build that pitch ourselves and then we put the, the poles and the tent, everything ourselves so our kids can come and play in the evening. We are putting another 8,000 square feet of the space in the front. Why do you feel that children need to come every day to the masjid? We thought that one day out of you know the week is not enough. Every day they are about eight to nine hours spending that time in the school. So they also need to spend some time in the masjid learning what they're doing. Right now we are thinking of looking to establish a full-time Islamic school. Tell us why the name Muhammadi Masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah. My name is Fahim Altaf and welcome to the Islamic Center of Lugerville. I'm just a khadim over here for our masjid. Alhamdulillah, this masjid started as a musalla in this Flugel city. Flugerville is a city between Austin and Round Rock, a small town. And we started, Alhamdulillah, as a musalla in 2012. Alhamdulillah, the city has grown. A lot of Muslims have moved here from the east and west coast. We bought this land back in 2017. Then Alhamdulillah, with the help of Allah SWT and the community, we built this masjid uh, two years ago. And right now we are in the process of expanding this. We have a packed agenda over here. Uh, we have an imam. Uh, he's from Pakistan. His name is Mufti Umar. Alhamdulillah, he's doing a great job. He's doing khatras at Fajr and Isha. He, he runs a five-day maktab program over here. We have, Alhamdulillah, two Juma prayers over here, completely packed. Then our Mufti Saab, he also runs our family gatherings. He does Quran seats on Thursday. Thursdays. We have another scholar, Dr. Hatim, who does a Sira class on Wednesdays. We also have Arbi learning classes over here. Plus, we have a Sunday school, which our sisters run over here. That's also, Alhamdulillah, going very well. So, Alhamdulillah, we've been, you know, serving our community and making sure that we have all the right programs for our community. I've been here since 97. I came to study here at UT Austin. So, I've been here since 97. So, Austin has grown exponentially, especially in the last four or five years. I came to Flugerville in 2004. At that time, we didn't have any masjid or masala over here. So, we used to travel about 20 minutes to go to our masjid in Austin. Austin. It's a North Austin Masjid or the community center over there. But Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala gave us uh, opportunity to come together and start the Musallah over here. But Muslim community is growing uh, around this Masjid. I would say we have close to 200 plus families over here and it's growing. Our Masjid is very active. So we have pretty much on daily basis, we have some, some program going on over here. We get, get a lot of uh, kids for our Maktab, about 60 of that. We also have about 60 plus kids for our Sunday school. Right now we are bound with the capacity of our Masjid because we don't have enough space, but we can show you that we are putting another 8,000 square feet of the space in the front. That will expand our space and then we can, inshallah, have more activities. Why do you feel that children need to come every day to the masjid? When we started this masjid, we believe that, you know, coming just one day a week is not going to cut off, you know, learning their Aqidah and learning, reading Quran and learning Arabic and learning Islamic studies. So we thought we need to have a proper five-day maktab over here with kids after school. They come here at least for two hours where they can recite the Quran, learn their surahs, learn about Islamic studies. So they are regularly connected with the deen because every day they are about eight to nine hours spending that time in the school. So they also need to spend some time in the masjid learning about their deen. And we thought that one day uh, out of you know the week is not enough. So that's how we started Maktab. But then again, there are students who can't come every day. And there was a demand that we need to have at least something for those kids who can only come once a week. And that's how after one year we started Sunday school. Alhamdulillah, both programs are completely packed right now. Like I said, our Mufti Saab, he is doing an amazing job. Mashallah, very young and he's connecting with the kids and, and you know, kids want to spend more time with him. So Alhamdulillah, he's doing a great job. So Alhamdulillah, right now we are in our phase three and uh, we have all the sufficient funds to finish our expansion of building. Oh.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So Alhamdulillah, this is our expansion for phase three. Like I said that Alhamdulillah, the Muslim population is growing in this area and our Friday congregation has almost doubled. So we have close to 300 people coming here for Friday prayers. We have two Juma prayers. So both of them are Alhamdulillah packed. So there was a need to expand. So let me walk you through inside of our building. So as you can see over here, we are under construction. Inshallah, plan is to get it done by, by December. It's a pretty big hall. We have expanded about 8,000 square feet, double story. This is a men's hall, and it should have a capacity of around 400 people. And then we have the same capacity upstairs, around 400. Yes, Alhamdulillah, it's a double story. And for sisters, the, the room which we prayed last night, that will be open to the sisters. So they will have two prayer rooms, inshallah. Okay, so this will all be for, for men the, for the that will be for women. Yes. Sure. And then also on the top, we'll have for the brothers over there. Also, we talked about yesterday about our Sunday schools. So right now, we are limited to 60 kids. But with this expansion, inshallah, we can have more students in our Sunday school. So this phase three is around $1.34 million. And alhamdulillah, we have secured all the funds. Right now, we are just in the final phase. So we already have the AC work finished almost. Electricity work is going to start this week. We just finished our roofing. So that work is also done right now. So Alhamdulillah, we are on times, good schedule. So it should be done by, by inshallah, by December. So like I said, you know, we have the AC work finishing up right now. And these are the AC units uh, we already have. They will be installed on the roof sometime in the next couple of weeks. So we have installed about, I would say, 24 tons of AC and because the weather gets very hot here in Texas so you want to make sure that our people are comfortable we have about 24 tons of AC will be installed in this new portion these are all the Yes, the, all the AC units over there, which will go on the roof. And then this is the play area over here. So Alhamdulillah, uh, looking at this playground, we are trying to buy this one, but it was costing us uh, 20,000 plus. So Alhamdulillah, community came together and we bought the lumber for around 5,000 and community all just put their volunteer hours to go and build this play, play area. And this is the most popular area because all the kids come here and in the afternoon, in the evening, on the weekends, they have families here, they have the kids. Subhanallah, for the children. Yes, for the children, for our community. You look over there, that's our uh, picnic area. So we have a monthly family gatherings over here. Right. So we have close to 200 people come here for our family gatherings. It's our first Saturday of the month. We put this shed together. Uh, this was also done by uh, our community. So we built this shed so people can sit over there. And then we also bought table tennis tables so our youth can come and play over here. And this is a sitting area for the brothers. So when we have the evening family gathering, so we serve food over here and everyone is sitting and enjoying the time. Uh, one more thing, we have uh, our community brothers who actually cook for 200 people uh, right over here. It's a pulao, it's a chicken, so whatever, you know, yes. people like. And uh, so they actually come here, they spend about six hours making food for the, right. on Saturday, they will come and, you know, dedicate their time and, and cook food for the community. Sure, that's every... Every first Saturday of the month. It's right. a monthly gathering, exactly. Alhamdulillah, to come together. So that's very popular. A lot of people show up over here. What's the size of the lot? Whole, whole lot? So the, the size of the lot is 3.2 acres. And we bought this land for $218,000, which is, Alhamdulillah, it was a blessing because now the cost of the land has gone up, but we got this at a very good time, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Our plan is to build some kind of a soccer field for our kids. So we are looking at either this area or in the front. And then also one of the future plans is to start looking into the building Islamic school. It took us about, I would say, two months to build this because the brothers will come on the weekend and in the evening as they have time. Oh, this is very popular among the, the families and the kids. In the evening, if you come here, you will see this like line over here to get on the swing set. Alhamdulillah, we have one uncle, he, he does painting. So he did all this paint job, did a very great job mm -hmm. doing the paint. So it was a community effort to put all this thing together. So most of the work we do over here is done through our volunteers to save the money for our community. So whatever we can do, whatever the skills we have in our community, we try to use that. Uh, another example is the cricket pitch over there, if you can walk on that side. So we also have a lot of cricket lovers over here. We actually build that pitch ourselves and then we put the, the poles and the tent, everything ourselves, so our kids can come and play in the evening. So usually we have it in the, on the weekends, we have kids playing cricket over there also. So this is the cricket nets, which uh, again, one of the products our community did uh, for our youth. We built this cement uh, track over there, laid down the carpet, and then we 
you've got community to put these poles together, bought the net, and did all this work. All the electric work was also done by volunteers. Wow. So Alhamdulillah, so, there's a lot of kids over here playing cricket. Looks like a professional. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Net. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah. So, Mr. Tell us why uh, the name Muhammadi Masjid? We did a lot of mashra with our community and also with our Sheikh. And he mentioned that we named this Masjid Muhammadi Masjid because we want to do the amal of the Muhammadi amal. Right? So, Prophet Sallam have did amal. So, let this Masjid be the beacon of light for those kind of amals. So that's why we named this Muhammadi Masjid. After the Prophet Yes. Mashallah. So that we follow the Sunnah. And exactly, yeah. follow the Sunnah and you know, so whatever Prophet Sallam has taught us, we teach everything over here to our kids, our community. Because the population is growing and Mashallah, we have a lot of youth over here. And we also have uh, our youth director, uh, Brother Nabil, and we also working with him to make sure, you know, what kind of activities we can do to bring more youth over here. My name is Nabil Khatri and I'm also one of the Khadims of the Masjid. And I also lead our youth efforts at the masjid in terms of organizing events and critically thinking of ways to bring the youth to the masjid and basically retaining them in the masjid, especially during these trying times for them. So making sure that there is a, a community that is inviting um, and also at the same time respectful to the youth and giving them a platform to, to be able to succeed in this world. Living in a non-Muslim country, they are exposed to a lot of non-Muslim elements. Being exposed to obviously non-Islamic traditions and cultures and at the same time, some of the developments in the community around the agendas around LGBTQ and stuff that does uh, pose a lot of questions to them, especially if they attend public schools. And having to deal with that from an Islamic standpoint, it's increasingly needed for them to come to the masjid to really understand the theme properly, to make sure that when they go out and when they're confronted with these questions about alcohol and LGBTQ and praying Salah and work and such. Um, I think those are genuine issues that have lasted for generations. I think that is something that we try to make sure that the kids have a safe haven basically for them to come and ask their questions and also be able to be ready to go out in the world while following Islam. And you feel the kids are curious these days about these issues? Like oh, that? absolutely. If you don't create a platform for them to ask questions in the masjid, they will go out and search it for themselves or they will ask someone else. They may or may not get directed to the masjid. There's a high chance that they might get the wrong answer um, or they might draw conclusions that might not necessarily be right from the standpoint of Islam. And you mentioned critically thinking. So why is critical thinking so important? Because I think it's not as easy as having a youth program and bringing the youth to the masjid. I think you have to think of things that attract them, things that keep them in the masjid, things that they like to see, how their mindset is in terms of like hanging around with friends and age groups and is it food that invites them, is it games that invites them. So I think it's beyond just having a program and telling the parents to bring their kids. I think you have to truly attract the youth directly and you have to cater to them directly and make sure that they are the ones bringing their parents. How's that going? Uh, how do you feel the youth is responding? I think a lot of them are responding well. We've started to see an increase in some of the youth coming to the masjid intentionally. They've definitely seen kids that are not regular in the masjid come to youth gatherings, and that's a positive sign of the efforts being made. But there's definitely a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of youth that doesn't come to the masjid on a regular basis. Youth that only shows up in Jummah at times. Uh, some youth is only coming for the Eid Salah. So oh, really? There's definitely a, still a very big discipline. Let's talk about the sisters, if there's any programs for them. So yes, Alhamdulillah, I mean, we have a lot of sisters over here. So we have started a Quran Tafsir for them. It is on the weekdays. We also have a program for the teenager girls. So Alhamdulillah, our Mufti Saab, his family is also an Alima. So she does on a bi-weekly basis uh, classes for the girls. So make sure that we cater to our sister side also and plus on the family gathering we have a big space on the back and we are increasing that space for sisters to get more comfortable so we have right now of the two uh, islamic schools they are running at full capacity and they have a huge waiting list out here the members over here in this community are working is to see what can we do to you know first to build something which will cater to the kids who can't go to islamic school because there is a huge waiting list out there so right now our goal is to see if we can acquire 
uh, some land uh, in a short term and then you know gather our community to go and build an, uh, a third Islamic school in this area. So that's our future project and also we're looking into having some kind of uh, physical activity for our kids. So we are right now in discussion of having a soccer field so we can bring the youth who goes out and play outside. They can bring it to the masjid and close to the proximity of the masjid so they can play over here and then they can also be you know attend the prayer. So there are some of the future projects we have. In. This house is, fits about I think 60 people, 60 to 65 people in this area. Yes, this is the overflow prayer hall. I mean, it's connected to, but also where uh, we pray Salah. The reason for the partition is to allow segregation for the maktab and Sunday schools. Uh, right. So it allows to have multiple classes and some privacy for the different teachers. Yeah. Maktab is a daily uh, after school uh, Islamic studies. So like for you to learn your Arabic alphabet and to read the Quran and do some hadith. And for how many hours? For two hours. Um, usually from five to seven. But like we said, we always have projects in mind. So right now we are thinking of looking to establish a full-time Islamic school and we have to go and acquire a land. So if you are interested, you can go to our website, icptx.org slash donate. And there are various ways you can look at to pay uh, to the money. So money to the to our, to our masjid. All right, Masjid. Directly they can donate. They can directly go to the website. They can donate through Zelle, to Square, to PayPal. All those listings are on that page. icptx.org slash donate. And uh, any last message for the people who are watching who are interested in moving to Pflugerville for this masjid? So I've been here since 97. Austin is a growing Muslim community. We have one of the top universities over here in the Milpai, went to the same university. Uh, my kids are going all over there, that university also. So I think it's a growing community. There are a lot of high-end jobs over here, but also we need to create an environment where we can also teach deen to our kids. So I think that environment is getting built. A lot of people want their kids to learn the in the right way. So I think it's a vibrant community and weather is very nice. Uh, the cost of living is reasonable. So we would like to, you know, have all the Muslims you know, come to Texas and please visit Austin. And you can stop at Fluger. <laughs>